such a large machine work is incredibly jaw-dropping. Operators perform a delicate dance, maintaining precise underground pressure. If they make a single mistake, it won't only cost money, it would also cost lives. If the pressure is too low, the ground above collapses. Too high, it jeopardizes the structural integrity of the tunnel. The job is full of surprises, and there is no such thing as a routine. So why do these operators show up to work every day? Did you know that excavating a tunnel below ground is actually called driving? This mole of steel has slowly become one of the cornerstones of urban city planning. Tunnel boring machines consist of about 90,000 parts, and because of their size, they mostly have to be put together on the construction site ahead of the project. The biggest TBM ever, the Chin Liang Yu by Heron Necht, has a diameter of 17.63 meters. It weighs 4,850 tons and has a power output of 5,600 kilowatts. Smaller TBMs like micro TBMs can be just one meter wide for utility tunnels. Some, like the Martina TBM, use enough to light up a small town and can dig 24 meters a day. Whether it's hard rock or soggy clay, there's a TBM for every job. Picture a TBM as a giant high-tech worm. At the front, you've got a rotating cutter head wheel breaking down rock and soil with their over 140 space cutters. With a diameter of at least 12 meters, these cutter head wheels are not the easiest to move and are usually the last parts that engineers attach to the machine. A single cutter head wheel weighs about 200 tons and is lifted by cranes to be secured in place with the rest of the machine. The cutter head wheel is the brain of the TBM and works its way slowly through the ground to avoid disrupting the traffic above. It spins at 2 to 8 revolutions per minute and grinds against the bedrock at a pressure of up to 400 bar, chipping away at rock or soil like butter. Behind the cutter head is a shield that protects the machine and workers from cave-ins. But here's the cool part. Tunnel boring machines build the tunnel as they go. The tunnel boring machines, or TBM for short as I've been calling them, is controlled from an inconspicuous control cabin located around 25 meters away from the cutting head. From this location, the head operator and his team on board have an uninterrupted view of the excavation process and how well the tunnel is moving. When in the control room, you are surrounded by screens showing laser-guided navigation systems to keep the machine on track. Operators monitor soil pressure to avoid surface heave or settlement. Too much force and you're pushing up the ground. Too little and it sinks. But that isn't all. Putting the control room in this section also shields the operators from being directly impacted by any problems that might occur. During the driving phase, hydraulic cylinders push the TBM forward against the bedrock. The cutting rollers on the face of the wheel excavate the rock and dirt, aided in their task by foam systems. As the TBM moves, the foam modifies the soil properties, making it easier to excavate while reducing friction. The excavated rock or dirt is whisked away to the surface by a conveyor belt or slurry pipes, and they are taken away to be used later in the construction process. As the TBM digs, it lines the tunnel with precast concrete segments to form a watertight ring, making the tunnel sturdy and ready for action. TBM operators have to know their machines inside and out. That is the only element in this whole operation that they can completely control. Operating a TBM is like piloting a spaceship, except it's 130 meters long and buried under a city. Every time a tunnel is being built, the operators face a whole new set of challenges. The type of driving method they use cannot be decided until they know what kind of terrain or condition they can expect to meet underground. For deep tunnels like those under rivers, the operators have to use laser theodolite and laser target as part of the navigation system to steer the machine correctly. Then an iron or steel cylinder shield is pushed into the soft soil to hold back water seepage and stabilize the tunnel's face. The shield can be pressurized to keep water out and ensure that there is no chance for the tunnel to cave in. For an extended tunneling project, the TBM can be underground for more than a year, so a crew of about 12 to 20 highly trained operators work in shifts, usually 12 hours long, and there has to be someone manning the TBM at all times, supported by a service team handling the logistics. 
Inside, TBMs are like mini cities with toilets, kitchens, and offices to keep the team comfy. Still, spending half your day underground, that's some serious dedication. Inside the machine, the operator always has to keep an eye out for the sensors because it's important to immediately spot when something is amiss. You also manage the cutter head speed and replace worn out disc cutters, which is no small feat in cramped pressurized conditions. The conveyor belt is also something they have to look out for. If the excavated soil is too dry or too wet, then it wouldn't stay on the belt and could cause major problems for the machine. Safety is huge. Operators wear helmets, gloves, harnesses, and hearing protection, and they're trained for emergencies like gas leaks or equipment jams. It's high stakes, high tech, and takes serious skill. TBMs are safer than old school drilling and blasting, reducing risks like rock falls, explosions, or electrocution. But this job isn't fun and games. While underground, the tunnel can shrink due to a phenomenon called shrinkage cracking. When this happens, the materials and concrete linings used to support the tunnel walls can crack and deform, potentially trapping the machine. So operators have to keep moving to avoid getting stuck and always be prepared to move in case of emergencies. Methane gas leaks are another threat, so TBMs have gas detectors to shut things down fast. In slurry TBMs, workers in pressurized caissons are at risk of decompression sickness and need to be screened periodically to assess their fitness and make sure they don't have any health conditions that would render them unsuitable to work in pressurized environments. Geological surprises like hitting an unmapped gas well can cause delays or shutdowns. And in urban areas, operators must be precise to avoid damaging buildings above. Thankfully, modern TBMs minimize vibrations and subsidence. Safety gear, training, and high-tech monitoring keeps risk low, but it's a job that demands focus. So why would anyone sign up for such an intense gig? Well, for one, it's a thrill, because once you get the hang of it, you quickly realize that there's nothing like it. Operators get to control a multi-million dollar machine that's literally shaping the future. You are driving through places that no one's seen before, and you get to drive through the earth, witnessing conditions that only few could understand. TBM crews are part of massive projects like the Channel Tunnel or Crossrail that connect communities and boost economies. That's a legacy to be proud of. Governments have even honored tunnel engineers and TBM operators as heroes. The pay is solid too, because specialized skills means good wages. Plus, it's a tight-knit community. You're working with a small crew in extreme conditions, so camaraderie is real. Some operators love the challenge of mastering complex tech, like laser navigation or slurry systems. There is a saying that once a tunnel engineer, always a tunnel engineer. If you love tunneling, you stay with it, and most of the engineers in this field haven't considered switching to anything else. Obviously, it's not for anyone, but for those who choose it, it's a calling. And there you have it. Tunnel boring machines are engineering marvels and are the unspoken heroes of modern cities. Would you want to drive one of these beasts? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.